Hey guys. So, in the interest of saving time, uh, because there is so much going on in this game, there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of dialogue that hasn't doesn't really pertain to the main story. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to cut things down. Like for example, the complete unedited version of this video is three and a half hours long. And I, I'm not going to post a three and a half hour video. Free. So I'm cutting it down for time. You should still enjoy the video, but at least this way you'll be able to kind of skip through a lot of the, the grind and the frustrating nothings. I'm only keeping the parts of the story that are relevant. Okay? Um, this isn't a complete playthrough, guide, walkthrough, uh, where I focus on every side mission and every collectible and every little thing. Vampire is a very story-rich game, and I'm trying to focus primarily on just the main story of Vampire. I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome to the Dave Factor. I'm Dave, and we're back with Vampire. So... Retrieve the thug in the sewers. We need to get right through here. And his friend, partner, whatever, was missing in the... He got into an argument, and he disappeared down these sewers, so... We're gonna go track down that guy. Try to figure out who's blackmailing... The other vampire. Forgot her name, Lady... Lady something or other. Okay. Careful, the endangered citizen might not survive the next night. Go check on him. Well, I know I can hear him yelling, but oh, there he is. Oh, that was not lock on. I don't want to die here. That was a little mouse I'm gonna get my butt kicked. Okay, at least I remembered how to dodge. So there's that. Ah. Dodge well, I did not learn, but dodge I learned. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. There we go. I don't want to die here. I want to see the sky, feel the fresh air. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here! I need to get out! I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay. Okay, I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out! Mr. Thatcher, your friend Newton sent me to help you. Do you remember him? Yes. Yes, I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. Okay. He has a headache. Okay, so... He'll return to the district the next night. Are you sure you're oh, alright, sir? I thought I was yes. opening the door. Yes, sir. Come on. The door. Oh, hi. What sort of creature is this? How do I switch the weapon? Oh god. Can't switch to my stake. Oh, 
the aggravated da damage doesn't regenerate. Dance of death right now. If I die, where do I reload it? If. I might be Ooh. Oh, you can't bring new tricks to the party? The dance has already started. Except to stay alive. Come on, we generate a little bit faster, I'd appreciate it. This is gonna be a long fight. Oh, or not. Oh. <sighs> Stamina get too low. Come on, you. There's one oh, left of him. Man. Not a lot to check, but I should anyway. <clears throat> right. Huh. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Lady Ashbury, that's her. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Up bronchitis. Don't have a, do I have a treatment for bronchitis? A strange man was at the door with a pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be from Whitechapel. Perhaps just the friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. Hmm. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. You Clayton? Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby. There's Clayton. Porter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Oh, you have fatigue. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. 
If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Mm. How much do I really want to tell this guy? If I say it's confidential, he'll probably not tell me anything. Let's see if honesty is the best policy. I'm afraid one of the nurses from the Pembroke Hospital may be involved with unsavory activities. Ah, could it be Dorothy Crane? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Okay, so that's a thing. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Yeah. Well, people should know about deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of my god, what happened to them? Uh, they became vampires. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's <laughs> why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. So, if people are interested in your stories, then you're an independent journalist. Okay. Goodbye, I guess that's Mr. that. Darby. Farewell. Now we need to find Richard Nithercott. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. 
The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But sorry, no, never heard of her. What? Everybody's heard about her, apparently. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Wow, that's a lot of sick people. Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. But you should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health. But I appreciate your concern, sir. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, mm. I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. Okay. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Yes, the enjoyable silence of the grave. You have a unique perspective on the situation, I must admit. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. Oh, well. Touché. Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But, ah, oh, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? 
In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. I'll leave you alone, sir. Find the mailbox and the letter. Okay. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. That's true. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Totter. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see, Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. Let's see what you're up to, Nurse Crane. Got a little explaining to do. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy she's running a free clinic, but... I'm going to make so much medicine. I hear you, Dorothy. I saw something. I was wrong. Supplies, supplies, supplies. This. Oh, she has a sister. Okay. Well. Let's see if we can confront Nurse Crane. And I had such... Positive vibes from her, too. I didn't think she'd be the blackmailer. Is she trying to heal a vampire? You can't fix I a skull. Help. Okay. He's going. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vassily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Okay. Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, Doctor. <laughs> he's not convulsing. He's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel! Hand me that scalpel! 
What can I do, Doctor? I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, Doctor. He's still bleeding, Doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? Oh, uh-oh. I can't see. The vampire's coming out. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. <clears throat> I'm no doctor. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but... Uh, and is he dead or well? We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I don't think you can save that guy. Okay, near screen. Here to test my bedside manners. Ah, you're right. I'm not. To what do I owe this courtesy? Talk to you in a minute. Borrowing this is an some supplies. Place for the illustrious Doctor Reed. You you I suspect bitter. it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So. How might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. 
So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? <sighs> no. Your place is here. Jailing you would be an even greater crime. So? Here is my proposition. I'll look the other way on your little enterprise. In exchange, you will resign from the Pembroke Hospital and provide me with medical supplies when the need arises. Dr. Reed, that sounds like a business proposition. My accomplice, then. No, just a privileged client. My research may require the occasional rare piece of equipment or ingredient. I'll pay good coin in exchange, fair and honest, to help finance your noble endeavors. We have ourselves a deal, Doctor. Good customers are always welcome. Yes, Nurse Crane. We have a deal. So no more blackmail. Yeah, but I don't want to kill citizen. Well, that sounds ominous. The district will soon suffer the consequences of. Okay. Right. Ah! Hold up now. I'm already defending the hospital. Wow. What was it to switch? There we go. I can't believe the vampire hunters just like walked in and started shooting the patients. Wow, okay. Let me do this. Visible as possible. Ow! You shot me in the back! Walk in and just start killing patients. Did oh, are we just not going to talk about what just happened? Okay. Okay. Ah ha ha ha. I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. Oh, man. You killed him. He trusted you. And you killed him. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. No need to apologize, my lady. 
I know exactly what you endure. The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. I must confess I have not put an end to the blackmail, my lady. Wait, I thought I did. Unfortunately, I could not bring myself to do it. I'm so disappointed in you, Jonathan. Oh. I didn't expect this from you. Lady Ashbury, you yourself admitted how ridiculous the sum of money was. I can assure you it was all used for charitable ends. Well, you were full of surprises, aren't you, Jonathan? All right, say I trust you, but you will still pay the ransom. That is only fair. After all, it was you who failed to bring this problem to a satisfactory conclusion. I believe I could agree to that. And since a lady always keeps her promises, I will now answer any questions you may have. Okay. Yeah, well, I couldn't kill Dorothy. All right, let's get some answers. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. <laughs> if you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now. And 27 I shall remain. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. Okay, so... Hmm. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Scowls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. Okay. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here, in the city. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. Okay. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. 
But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Okay. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewin. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society, and like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone, but it seemed they have been recruiting. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No oh. vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. So Jonathan's maker is an elder vampire, an ancient one. Excuse my forwardness, but are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution. And I'm no fool. Is he... He's really gonna... Am I a vampire? Really? Uh, no, you're a zombie. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word. Defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an echo, And that you shall remain. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... But a branch of the immortal tree. Like a subspecies? There's different species of them. Okay. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake. I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. Okay. Ah, oh, well, that's that, I guess. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Right. Who? Jonathan's 
Have we met his maker yet? Like on accident, maybe? Oh. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the Skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. Right. Well, let's level up. <clears throat> See what we got. I have a mighty thirst. Endurance is very important. Oh, I don't have enough. Okay, well, that'll be all right for me. All right, let's see how we're doing. Newspaper article. As of late, the rumors that surround Whitechapel are ripening into facts. In the last three months, the police have suspected the district of hosting what might be the heart of London's medicinal black market. But of course, these suspicions will remain assumptions for no task force or additional police presence has been sent to Whitechapel. No large drug stocks have been found, nor no crime lords arrested. This masquerade has only been planned as a desperate attempt to conceal the blatant incompetence of the London City Council's Board of Health by giving the populace a cheap and easy victory while the epidemic spreads more and more each day. First of all, when you take time to review the most recent statistics, you discover that the district of Whitechapel is coping with the disease much better than the other parts of the city. Is it a miracle? Evidence of the activity of an illegal but efficient medical underground? More proof of the authorities' criminal incompetence? All I know is this. If a Londoner has a better chance to survive the epidemic by choosing to live in this godforsaken borough, I am ready to move to any cheap flea-infested infested flat some shady landlord will agree to rent me right now. Okay, so, seems to me that Whitechapel is going to be fine. Oh, that's why I got the newspaper article. Okay, concerning the... Alright. Okay. Well, I'll leave this here. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. And if you have a comment or anything, just go ahead and leave it in the comments, obviously. And if you want to see more, subscribe. See you guys later.